today's video, we're going to make Snowball for Rick and Morty. Say something for a Snowball. Where are my testicles, Summer? Of course it had to be that line. They have been removed. Where are they? <laughs> uh, that's a really difficult question to answer. So ideally, you'll be able to get a large stuffed animal of a Bichon Frise, which, by the way, means little curly bitch. <laughs> Anyways. I wasn't able to find one, so I used this teddy bear. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to reposition some of his features. For example, removing his eyeballs, relocating them a little bit narrower onto his face, uh, removing some stuffing. To help me with this, I'm using this free application from the Google Store called Photo Layers. It's pretty awesome. I can overlay one photograph on top of another so I can get the positioning of the features just right. So after repositioning the eyeballs, we're going to wipe that smile off his face and make him look a little displeased on how the world has been treating him. So we're also going to reposition his ears. Snowball's ears are on the sides of his head, whereas this teddy bear is on the top. We'll put the ears back on towards the end. We've got some extra string left over too, so we're going to give him some angry eyebrows. Okay, I'm going to be using this foam mat set for the majority of the mech suit. I've used this foam once before to make a Halloween costume. While my friend said we won Halloween and all the other kids can go home, we ended up taking it to Comic Palooza here in Houston, and we had lines of people just waiting to take pictures with us. My son was like a rock star. At one point, Ross Marquand pulled us over and uh, allowed us to skip the line and take a picture with him for free. It was pretty awesome. Thanks, Ross. Okay, you're going to need to sharpen your knife a lot. I recommend every other cut. You'll know that your knife is going to need to be sharpened whenever it's scalloping the edges of your cuts and you'll actually feel it yanking on your knife if you're cutting. I'm using barge all-purpose cement for the majority of this build. It's really good glue. You can actually even speed up the activation time with it by using a heat gun on it. You can actually see the glue dry as it changes its sheen. This is an indication to let you know that it's ready. And you'll also notice that using the heat gun on the foam changes the sheen of it as well. We'll get into that whenever we're getting closer to, to painting it. If you mess up the alignment, just pull it apart and stick it back together. It's pretty forgiving. You can also shape the foam using a heat gun. I've put some coat hanger wires into his arms to allow us to bend them into position so he's not all floppy in the chair. Here we see the mostly completed chair. The legs are going to be attached to the sides. The foam is going to be a little bit too flexible to accommodate that, so we're going to reinforce them with some plywood. And now we're going to work on the hips. We're going to carve out a little place for some PVC to insert. We're going to glue it up. And then we'll also sand the PVC to make sure it has a good solid connection to the foam. I'm wrapping some duct tape around the other side of the PVC to hold everything in place so it doesn't pull back out. Okay, I'm attaching the shoulders to the chair. You can see that the shoulders are drooping a little bit, so we'll reinforce that a little bit later on. We're going to cut out some holes for the lights for the shoulders. Now let's start working on the thighs. We're going to roll them up into position and heat treat them to allow it to bend easier. And then we'll end up gluing the seams and then reinforcing that temporarily with some rubber bands. So the back of Snowball's legs have some kind of protrusion. So we're going to cut out a little area for this new piece of foam to slip into. We're going to tape that down into position and glue it all up. Now we're going to cut out some light slots for the legs. We've done something like this before, so we're just going to fly through this. I'm using some PVC to add to the structural stability of it. Okay, now onto the feet. Cutting out the light slots for the arms. Now painting some rulers from Home Depot. This will be the upper arm. We need to make them thicker, so we're going to wood glue them together. Okay, 
Okay, now we're going to reinforce those shoulders. We're going to use that coat hanger wire, and we're going to also use some additional foam for more rigidity. Okay, now we'll attach the upper arms. Next, we're going to make some circles for the elbows. I've made this little compass that'll help us with that. Okay, we're almost ready to start applying a coating to the mech suit. So what we'll do first is we'll hit it with a heat gun. The heat gun is actually closing the cells of the foam. You can actually see that change. You want to do this because the foam would otherwise act like a sponge and would just soak up all this paint and whatnot that you're trying to apply onto it. So this will make it a lot faster and a lot cheaper to apply the coating. Notice how the appearance of the foam changes with the heat gun. So you can use quick seal or flex seal to seal up any small gaps. When you do that, uh, also be sure to wet your finger. It helps to smooth out the area so you don't need to sand it when you're done. For larger gaps though, I recommend using Bondo. We'll go into more depth with Bondo later on. Okay, next I'm hitting it with Plastidip. Plastidip is an intermediate layer between the foam and the paint. So if there's any flexing on the foam suit, it's not gonna damage the paint job. It's not really important here for the upper stages of the, the outfit because they're not gonna be flexing that much. However, the feet, it's gonna be very important. The feet are gonna be flexing as, as you're walking around in it. Okay, next we're going to attach the feet to the leg and we're going to attach it again with some coat hanger wire. I'm just marking a place where the coat hanger is gonna go. So the feet would have too much play in them, so we're actually gonna tie them down. I'm using some offcuts here to glue them in place. Okay, next we're gonna work on his visor. We're gonna take some measurements and we're going to connect the dots. And then cut it out with paper here. I also fold it over the paper to make sure that both sides are uniform. And then I trace it out on some plexiglass. And I'm just going to score it here with my knife and then we'll rock the plexiglass back and forth to break it free. And then I'll flex the plexiglass into a curve for now and we'll get a more permanent shape later on. Now let's give it some tint using this seaside spray paint. And next we're gonna use some paint thinner to make it more transparent so you'd actually see his face. So we're gonna be making the helmet out of Bondo. The recommendations are to use a golf ball sized amount of gray filler and one and a quarter inch of the hardener. We'll first apply it to this small balloon to show you a problem that you might have with it the first time you use it. When you first start applying, it applies on smooth. If you take too long though, you're gonna to start to get a finish that looks like this. At that point, stop what you're doing and then restart later on after everything's hardened up. Okay, now we'll actually work on the helmet itself. So I'm using this larger balloon as the template. Next, we're gonna work on the protrusions on top of the helmet. I'm using this dollar store garden light just to get the shape. I'll also be using this tube of epoxy stick for the center light on top of the helmet. I'm getting the height lined up, and then we'll use some spackle on those garden lights so that we have a uniform surface. I'll show you this cool trick I'm using for my sanding blocks. I'm no longer buying sanding blocks. I'm using sandpaper that's just glued on to these offcuts from the foam. This sandpaper happens to be 80 grit. I'm using that for the majority of the sanding. And again, it's just affixed to the foam using that spray adhesive. And now you've got some custom sanding blocks. Now we'll use our sanding stick to make sure everything's dolphin smooth. And I just attach those protrusions on with epoxy to the helmet. For the hose, I'm using this washing machine hose. 
We're just going to cut it in half and we'll use both sides. Next we'll work on these hose receptacles. I'm just going to use these lids. Yeah! Now it's time to do some painting. So I've drilled out a hole in the helmet and we're going to use this string of LED lights for that central light. I'm just going to diffuse it using parchment paper and then again we'd be using that epoxy tube that you saw earlier. The majority of the body lights are going to be coming from the spool of rope light. Now it does come with a couple connectors, but not enough for what we need. To get more wiring connections, I'm using this connector set. I'll show you how to use it. So these two pins need to line up with the two copper dots on the rope light. So you need to make a cut between these four dots. I'll show you that right now. And then you slide the plastic into two channels. It's kind of hard to see here in the video. But you slide the copper contacts underneath the connector's contacts. And then you snap everything in position and you're good to go. I'm just connecting it up to my battery terminal. And just using the heat shriek tubing to lock everything in place. Okay, I just fed the wires down to the leg and I'm going to now glue the battery terminal into this channel. Now we need some material to diffuse the light. I'm using this distilled water jug and we'll just cut off what we need for the whole project. So I'll slide a piece down to the leg and we'll show you what it looks like. For the arms, there's enough room to move the lights farther back, which diffuses the light even further. So I'm going to build up a little system for that. But we'll take a break from the lights for right now, so we can work on the fingers. Fingers are just coat hangers. And then we'll just finish off the rope lights for the arms, and then seal everything up. Next, we're going to work on the collar. I've got some rope lights to serve as the lighting source for it. And then I'm putting in some cardboard so that no light shines through the back end of the collar. Now I'm adding some buttons for the operator to use to make it look like he's talking. Next, we'll be wiring up the sound module. This allows us to put in custom sounds, like for example, when he's walking. And that little speaker is remarkably loud. And now we're going to need to extend out the wiring for the button. Okay, next we're going to work on the knees. This is the smaller part of the knee. We're going to build up the surface area a little bit with some Bondo and then sand it down into shape. For the bigger part of the knee, we're going to use these ornaments from the dollar store. We'll remove this first, then we'll create a hole for the PVC to slide up into. So we're going to need to cut a channel into this particular large part of the knee. And to do so, we're going to use this coat hanger to show us where we need to start cutting. Just basically connecting the dots. Waka, 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 waka. Next, we're going to feed the wire through the bigger ball, and then we're going to slide the ball on top of the PVC. And now we have a knee joint that works in two directions. I'll widen this up now so you can see inside of it to see how everything is connected. Now we'll work on some finishing details. I'm using thin foam and I'll be attaching it with spray adhesive. And here's what we have so far. Now it's time to glue on the ears. Okay, now we're getting ready for some Halloween time. It could be used for cosplay, Halloween, or an awesome room decoration. If you use it as a costume, you get the bonus invisible pedestrian costume. Hey, Snowball! 
go fetch. If you like this video, you might like some of my others. Links to these videos are in the description. I've also included links to the materials that I used for this mech suit. If you saw something new, or at least saw something that you liked, please leave a thumbs up. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.